Borough finished the first block of games this season with the exact type of performance and win that we needed. What is up guys, welcome back to the channel and another episode of Project Borough, the reviewing show we do here on the channel where we review every single Borough game and as always a huge thank you to everyone who's checked out each of the Project Borough reviewing shows, preview shows so far this season as we head towards the end of the first block of games. The support's been amazing and I appreciate every single one of you who has checked out the videos and of course... The podcast providers, as I always say, if you'd rather listen to these videos on the go, there is a link in the description where you can do exactly that by checking out the Project Borough review and previews on your chosen podcast provider. So, it has been a up and down start to the season for Borough, and arguably we've done enough to win every single game. But after the back of two disappointing League games against Derby and Portsmouth where we practically beat ourselves and dropped points when we shouldn't have. And that horrific 5-0 defeat which we can now completely banish, which happened in the Cup in midweek. Borough have, well, banished that and can draw a line under everything that's come before this now and head into the, into the international break. The first one with three points, a solid win, a clean sheet, no mistakes... No drama, chances taken, exactly what the doctor ordered. And I said this in my preview show a couple of days ago. I just wanted Borough to win. I didn't care how it come. I didn't care what the circumstances were, whether the ball went in off Lucas Engel's backside, which wouldn't have happened because he didn't play. But yeah, I just wanted Borough to, to just draw a line under what's been a, a season of fr frustration so far. You know, we definitely don't have the points we should, but... You can still go into the first break, seven points from four games, and you can still be relatively positive. You know, the points tally is, is good, the performances have arguably been better, and I think what we've maybe not had that we've deserved as much, because you can still argue, you know, we've been wasteful in front of goals, so, you know, is there an argument there that we haven't deserved the points we haven't got? The one thing that we should definitely have is less goals conceded, and that's been down to individual errors. So a clean sheet here was absolutely imperative, and that's what we got. In terms of the game, first half was a nothing show, to be honest with you. It was a really poor first half from both sides. There was barely any efforts on goal. We had a few pop shots from range, none of which really troubled the goalkeeper. I don't think Cardiff troubled Dieng at all in the first half. It was a game that was spent completely in midfield and whenever either side got into each other's defensive third the quality was extremely poor and the final ball the crossing it was just not there and it was a half to completely forget with no real notable highlights whatsoever however the second half is where things really came into life and i thought at half time you know this is this has just got a scrappy 1-0 win written all over it whether it was for cardiff or for Borough, I just thought, neither side looks at it. One's going to either nick it with a scrappy goal, or it'll just peter out into a nil-nil. But ah, thankfully, I was wrong. But Borough had to nurse a very, very tough and frenetic and fast second-half start from Cardiff. Credit to them, they come out, and they come out like a house on fire. Whatever Errol Bullet said to them at the start of the second half or in the half-time break worked because Borough were on the ropes for a good five to ten minutes after the second half. I mean I was so frustrated I thought I thought we'd we we did not even realise kickoff. We were still I think half half of our head was still in the changing room. And it could have on another day gone the opposite way. Dieng had to make one really good save from a shot that come in from the left hand side. And the big opportunity came for Aaron Ramsey who on the right hand side the ball ricocheted around, he got space, got a shot off, Dieng was beaten, and Luke Ehrling cleared the ball off the line, onto the post, which could have went in, but it bounced back to Luke Ehrling, who must have been not even a yard off his uh, over the line, it was it was close, I thought it had crossed the line, but to be fair to him, in such a, such a frenetic situation, 
he was so calm in how he just sort of took a touch, volleyed it clear, and Borough lived to fight another day. And I, you know, when you, you know, I always say swings and roundabouts in football, and you know, there's been moments this season where we've had shots, and you think, how's that not gone in? Crosses, how's that gone in? How have we conceded that? And sometimes, as I always say, you might look back at results and go, how the hell have we lost that? But on another day, that ricochets off Luke Ayling, it goes in, or it doesn't hit him and goes in, or the, he fumbles the clearance and it's an own goal, and Cardiff are one look, and it could be a different game. So, you know, swings and roundabouts sometimes look goes your way, sometimes it doesn't. It did go for us here, but after that, the game sort of settled down, and Borough got their first goal at the most perfect time. And who says... We are not set-piece specialists. I mean, my God, Borough haven't scored a goal from a corner in 87 years. And then we've gone and done it twice in two games. And it's the same age-old combination between Finazaz and the 2024-25 Golden Boot winner, Matt Clark, who's got two from two. I mean, you know what? He deserves it so much. He's been our best player by a country mile. And again, you know in terms of doing his actual job at the other end, you know, Matt Clark, I mean, I'm going to obviously talk about the 11 a little bit later, but I've just got to pull him out now because, again, absolutely outstanding from Matt Clark. He's in the right place at the right time every single time, times his challenges to perfection, gets his head on everything, every shot that goes towards our goal. He's just blocking. He's just there in the way. No one deserves to have gotten, you know, two goals thus far this season than Matt Clark, and it was a an old-fashioned header, you know, one of them where it just bang, bullet header into the corner. Great corner from, from Finazaz. Two assists for him in two as well. And it was perfect because it just got Borough ahead and it just settled us down after that really good start to the second half by Cardiff. And then, to be fair, for much of the second half, Cardiff had a lot more of the possession. Borough were doing a lot more defending. But it was without... Cardiff really testing Senna Dieng, you know, as we did a little bit like against Swansea in the opening day, you know, we just defended our box really well, you know, crosses that would come in, we would clear, we would defend our box really well, we protected the back four really well too, and despite Cardiff having a lot of possession, but it sort of controlled the game without having the ball, and it was a case of, don't make any mistakes, because I still felt like we had an error in us somewhere, but I knew a second goal would kill it. And thankfully, that came all the way up until the 82nd minute. But it didn't really have that many opportunities. You know, we're talking about a team here that are XGFC, more shots, most touches in the opposition box. We've blown the league away in terms of our numbers. They've been ridiculous. Wasn't the case today, though. And we just got one chance, second half, 82nd minute. And that was what finished the game off. Good play. The centre of the pitch down towards the left-hand side. It ricochets to Alex Gilbert, who, again, I'll talk about in a bit. Come on here. Was once again fantastic. Just on side, I think, when the ball ricochets back off of Lati Laff. He plays a ball back towards Aidan Morris. And Aidan Morris is another one who I could pull out and just praise to, to the hilt on how brilliant he was today. And in fairness, this is once again, you could say, Lady Luck shining on Borough for once. That old swings and roundabouts argument. Because Aidan Morris, <laughs> given that he had a free shot just inside the box, it wasn't even hitting the target. It was flying wide and it would have looked like a shocker if it hadn't gone in. But given Borough's look, it hits a Cardiff player. Aaron Ramsey directs it back towards the goal and it doubles Borough's lead. And from that moment on, it was a case of can we get a clean sheet? And the answer was Yes. So a delightful day at the office for Borough and I wasn't asking for a, you know, blockbuster, exhilarating 4-0 win where we had another 30 shots. As great as that would have been, all I wanted was a quiet, steady, drama-free afternoon where no one produces a howler, Senny and Clark don't go for the same ball, Isaiah Jones doesn't do a ridiculous back pass. I just wanted a drama-free day where we just had a couple of chances, comfortable 2-0 win, clean sheet. This was the perfect game for me. And you can see by the stats, you know, and how the game sort of panned out. But I still had, you know, a good few opportunities. But Cardiff were right there with us as well. They had more shots in the end, 12 to Borough's 10. We did edge shots on target with five. Neither side 
had over 1xG, which for Borough is quite a shock this season. I mean, as we've continued to do, we limited the opposition to nothing, basically, with their relatively low XG. You can see on the shot map, a lot of their efforts come from in and around the edge of the box, outside the box. Borough themselves only had five shots on target, as I say, an XG of 0.86. So good to see we've overperformed our XG for once. But yeah, even accurate passes, you know, you can see Borough weren't all that great in possession in the first half. Cardiff definitely had more of the ball second half. But as I say, they didn't really trouble us. So I will move on to the 11. And it was a quite an intriguing 11, actually. A lot of it was... Players I predicted would be in the team, in fairness. The back four was exactly what I thought. And I, I, I did say Neto Borges to start just down to Engel and his, his form. And that's exactly what happened. Neto Borges was thrown straight in. And he was very, very steady. You know, I'm not going to go crazy and say he was fantastic and outstanding and it's one of the best debuts ever. But it didn't have to be. You know, and I think given he'd had one day training, you know, he was going to a, an away game in the championship, dropped straight in. He was very good, you know, and I think that can't be understated how hard it would have been for him to step straight in and be as solid as he was. I wouldn't say he offered us anything going forward. You know, I wouldn't say there's much offensively there yet, but did everything defensively that he needed to. And for me... Yeah, did an outstanding job at left back. The rest of the back four, I think, did really well. Dyke Steele has settled in right back position, you know, given the injuries. I think he's done a very good job there. Ailing too, not a natural position, but him and Clark defended the box really well. Clark gets man of the match. He was brilliant once again, just a top, top defender in every way and deserved his goal. The midfield too, Hackney and Morris were brilliant as well. Controlled the midfield. They're building such a good relationship. They really are, honestly. They're, they're just on the same wavelength. Keep picking out passes, picking up space. And I'm really, really excited for them too. And I think Morris has, has taken that shirt from house, and if I'm honest, and um, he's excelled. I, I can't praise Aidan Morris enough. It's, it's hard to... You know, forget about Hackney and how great Hackney is. Hackney's just performing at such a great level. It's sort of what we expect from him. And that's why maybe he's not had the praise that, that Morris has had. They equally have been as good as each other. But Aidan Morris, I think, just for how he's arrived in English football. And he's just settled in instantly. What a find he has been. He's so good on the ball. So good in possession. He's so calm on the ball as well. I'm loving him. Absolutely fantastic signing. And I guess the only real downside come from the attacking players who, as I say, just didn't really click. You know, quality in the final third in the first half wasn't quite there. Um, Isaiah Jones had a few balls in the box, didn't really find their mark. Conway linked up play really well, but didn't really have any opportunities. Azaz was the outstanding player within the attacking four. You know, I think everything that we do well comes through Finn Azaz. You know, he's so good on the ball. Uh, picking out players again the only real you know can you know criticism of Azaz maybe was that again he held on to the ball too much at times took a few shots when he maybe shouldn't have but you know everything good that we do comes through Finn Azaz and he was brilliant the only thing as well I would say we tried Bergzog as the nine today because uh, when Conway's name dropped in the team sheet I thought well Conway's going to replace like Elath who of course didn't start due to all the transfer speculation and I will be doing a separate video on deadline day and the transfer win and everything that came with that yesterday but it was clear that Lath wouldn't start after the drama of yesterday but Bergzog was the one who come in as the nine with Conway staying in that sort of number 10 position with Azaz on the left and unfortunately I'm not sold on Bergzog as the nine and I feel like that's that's probably what Carrick wants to do you know have Bergzog as the backup to laugh, keeping Conway as that shadow striker, but yeah, for me, not sold on Bergzog as a number nine. I, I, I just didn't think it worked. You know, I think having him coming in off the left was much more effective. And to be fair, when McGree comes back, we might have McGree in on the left, but then where'd you put Azaz? Where'd you put Conway? Who knows at this point? There's so many different players who could play in so many different areas, but I think if there was a few little things that didn't quite work today for me, Probably Bergzog as the nine. And the attacking players didn't quite click in the end. But they're not going to look at the league. I continue to not look at the league at this early stage. But I think that's just... This result has just gave Borough and all of our fans just a sigh of relief. You know, it's just what we've needed after some up games, downs, you know, a bit of chaos, individual errors here and there. 
it was just what we needed to just settle things down, draw a line under the Derby defeat, the Portsmouth draw, and we just kick on now. And I think seven points from four games is great. You know, it's good. It's, it's Listen, it's a mile better off than where we were last season. And there's still a lot of teams that just aren't settling. You know, a lot of the new relegated sides haven't quite got going yet. Sunderland, I can see currently, are going four from four at Portsmouth, which is annoying, um, but you've got to give it to them. They've started well. I don't think they'll keep it up, but they're definitely going to be up there. But I think when you're looking at a lot of the other sides, you know, who you know, are in and around as you'd expect to be up there, I think we've started just as well as, if not better, than a lot of them. You know, a lot of hype around Burnley at the start of the season. We're on the same number of points as them leads. They must be leading now. But, you know, there's a lot of teams who are still in and around us, have arguably been weaker than us, not as good. I think we should have had more points, but we're in and around it. I think that's the main thing, and I think the teams who've run away at the top like a runaway train, they'll regress slightly, and a lot of the sides who've started, who've had a poor start like Luton, will improve undoubtedly. So things will level out as we go. So to be there, top seven, top eight, after a steady start, suits me down to the ground. But that's where we'll leave it. We'll be back after the international break, of course, or just before it, we'll preview the Preston game at some point in just over a week's time. And then we've got some very interesting games coming back. We've got Preston at home. Normally got a good record against them. Then we go to Sunderland, which could be a big one. I'd love nothing more than Borough to burst their bubble going down to the stadium, or going up to the stadium, I should say. Stoke at home, that'll be tough. Let's not repeat the cup game, please. And then some tough games to West Brom and Watford, one of which I will miss because I'll be away on holiday. But hopefully Borough kick on, go through the gears now. And we'll start to see the best of this Borough team. Now the transfer window's over with. And we've kept all of our best players. As I say, I will be doing a video on deadline day. On the transfer window. And the fact that we have kept all of our best players. And added even more. So I'll discuss that. If you want to see that, stick around on the YouTube channel. And subscribe for much more Borough content. I'll be doing championship roundup videos. Videos on other championship clubs throughout the break. Lots of other fun stuff. And if you're listening to me on the old podcast provider, then do give me a like and a follow over on there. Much appreciated too. But until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching. Leave me a comment in the section below on your thoughts on the result and Borough so far this season. Until next time, thank you for your support as always on this series. And yeah, we'll be back with a previous show for Preston in a week or so's time. So until then, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all in the next one. Mm -hmm.